so that they can learn. And then we send our, our workers out here to help disciple them. We've got workers we support monthly here in Russia that come out here, uh, travel in the vehicles that we purchase for them so that they can mentor them and teach them. This is an exciting place to be. It's springtime now, so it's absolutely beautiful here. And thanks for caring enough to be a part of this. That is, is a very exciting part of our ministry. And uh, that most recent trip, um, Bill had the privilege of meeting a few more um, believers. And uh, there was one particular community that they kind of traveled out of, a place called Gorkuta. And it's in the, uh, the, the Arctic area of Siberia. And um, then they travel out of there on uh, these vehicles, and then they travel with the, the reindeer herders on the sleigh. So it's, it's an interesting uh, type of trip that uh, they do as they get the experience in all of these modes of transportation. Um, but one of the things, you know, as Bill was mentioning, that um, uh, you know he's been training and teaching these people how to pray for one another pray for the sick and believe God for healing. Um, one of these pastors from the church that he connected with um, went with him on that particular mission, got very excited about the idea of ministering to the Nanites from his church. And that particular community is sort of a stop-off point for these nomadic Nanites. And uh, every once in a while, as they are going by that area, they'll stop at the community and they'll get supplies, you know, some of the staple foods that they need, because basically they just eat reindeer meat and fish, and um, in the summertime they'll add some berries and things from the land uh, to their diet. But they do eat um, bread and cheese, that kind of thing, and so they stop in in these um, communities like Borkuda and then they get their supplies. And uh, so the pastor had this great idea. He said, what if we have a walk-in healing clinic in our hometown, in our church, like you have in Ottawa? Now, Bill had been sharing with them how we um, operate this walk-in healing clinic where Every Friday, all day long and all evening long, we have trained uh, people from the church that just minister to anybody that walks in and wants prayer for healing or deliverance or um, if they've got um, financial needs or if they don't know the Lord. Some that are believers that want to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I mean, anything they want prayer for. These teams will pray for them. And we have on the walls of our church and down the hallway, we have hundreds and hundreds of testimonies of people that have received miracles and they have written them out and we document them along the walls in, in frames. Um, so that when people come into the church, they can walk down the hall and their faith can be built up as they read about these miracles. And uh, so because of that, this pastor got so excited and said, let's do it here in Burkuda. So when the people, when the Nanites and the townspeople drop in, then we can pray with them and see miracles happen. And if their people are trained up, then they can just keep multiplying themselves and start training the Nanites to do the same thing. And so that is what we're going to be doing this uh, winter. We'll be going over and uh, taking some of our ministry team with us, the director of our healing clinic and uh, some others, and we will train these people. Um, they, they know the word of God, but they don't know how to, um, you know, really pray through and see breakthrough uh, concerning healing and miracles. And so we're going to do that. And so this is very, very exciting that we're not only doing the Greenland trip soon, but also going back to Arctic Russia to, uh, uh, to set up this uh, healing ministry. And then I just returned 
um, from Maine Labrador. Now, Labrador has been on our hearts for uh, a number of years, and we've been supporting our, a missionary and his wife there for a number of years, and we helped them buy their home, which is really a, an outreach center. It's a very large place and has room uh, for them to hold their church services in their basement. And uh, so the, the uh, native people from Maine, and there are many, many of them, the, the majority in Maine, in Maine are um, native uh, Inuit people, and they come, they receive ministry, and it's a clothing distribution place, they provide food for the needy, and all day long they are just pouring out ministry to the needy people of Maine. So I had the, the privilege of going there um, just about a month ago. We took a team of youth from our church to minister and have like a daily vacation Bible school for the children. It was really, really successful. The kids came by the droves and uh, they had amazing ministry to them. And then in the evening services, I had the privilege of ministering to the adults and the families. And um, over the, the week, um, I got to know a lot of the people. I met some of them in, in a previous trip, but I really got to know some of them on this particular mission. And I want to tell you about one particular young woman. I want to tell you her story so that you understand the kind of things that are happening in our own backyard. You know, when we talk about Arctic Russia and ministering to the needy people over there and the people that are bound by, um, by alcohol and are, are uh, suffering from depression and uh, there's, there's just suicide is epidemic, you know, you think we've got to help those people way over there, and we do. And that's why it's very much a part of our, our ministry. But it's happening right here, right here in Canada. There are communities throughout the Arctic and in northern areas of our nation where people are literally dying because they don't know Jesus. And they, they feel hopeless. Their conditions are so bad. Um, they're living in such pain that the only way out, they feel, is by killing themselves. And it's happening over and over and over again. Most of it's unreported because it's so common. And uh, we've had a number of, of reports of suicide in this community of Maine. This is one young lady that so far we've been able to rescue. This young lady, when she was just a little girl, her alcoholic parents would use her with all of their friends and relatives and anybody that came into the house would use her for sexual purposes. She was abused, she was hurt in ways that I couldn't begin to tell you. And uh, the scars that were left on this young woman's life, she can't live with herself. She is in such emotional pain that she, she is, is just, she's either crying or so totally drunk and out of it that it just, you know, her memory is just so fuzzy that um, she doesn't have to think about all the details. But she lives with this day in, day out, the memories of how she was used and abused over a number of years. Her story is, common to almost every young woman in that community. There's hardly a woman that does not have a story of sexual abuse, of physical abuse, and of just unspeakable things that have been done to them. This young woman, I'll call her Mary because I don't want you to know her real name. Mary came to the, the house where we were staying um, one day, and she was very, very drunk. Um, I, I was teaching. We were just completing a service.